Hi, this is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. In today's video of Custom QuickBooks Training, I want to talk to you about the differences between entering a sales receipt, entering an invoice, and just making a deposit into your register. All of these are three different ways of recording income into your QuickBooks, and sometimes it's a little confusing to know which is which. For this demo, I'm going to be using the QuickBooks Online test drive file. When you deposit money into your bank account that's income, you need to tell QuickBooks this is income. From there, you need to decide, am I going to track the person that it's coming from and the services I have sold them, or am I just going to record it as income? The question becomes, what information do you want QuickBooks to provide back to you later? If you're the ice cream seller at the farmer's market, you just need to know how much money uh, you collected selling ice cream. If you provide services um, such as repairs or consulting or coaching, that sort of thing, then you are going to want to keep track of who you've been working with, if they owe you any money, and what you've sold them. So I'm going to show you three different routes for the same thing and provide examples for each. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is if you're, like I said, the ice cream vendor, or maybe you're a medical office, any variety of things, but you're not keeping track of your customers in QuickBooks Online. There are two ways to record this income. The first is to make a deposit the long way or the manual way, and I want you to see what that looks like. In the upper left hand corner of your screen, you'll click on new and then you'll go to the right hand side and under the column of other, you'll click on bank deposit. You'll then indicate where is the money getting deposited to. For our example, it's going to go into the checking account. For you, you might have multiple checking accounts and you'd have to pick which one it's going into. Over to the right, you're going to say what day is the money going in. We're going to ignore the stuff on the top. The receipt from, you're not going to say who it's coming from because it's coming from a variety of people. And so then over here for account, you're just going to pick the income account you would like this assigned to. I really like the example of ice cream, partially because it's new and partially because I've already said it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new income account for ice cream. So income, and we'll say Bellevue Farmer's Market. All right, so in our pretend example, uh, we sell ice cream at various farmers markets. And when we take that money to the bank, we want to differentiate and say this money came from the Bellevue market versus the Redmond market versus the Seattle farmers market. Over to the right, we'll say what are we depositing? In this case, cash. And how much? We're going to say deposited $1,000. It was a good day for ice cream sales. So I'm going to click save and close. So in this case, I've deposited money and I've said this money came from the Bellevue Farmer's Market, but I didn't say which customer it came from. So let me show you where you can see that on reports and where you cannot see it on reports. Let me first go back and edit this real quick. Um, deposit. What I should have done and I didn't do was give it a name. Okay, so first we'll look at the profit and loss. To get there, I'm going to click on reports on the left hand side of my screen. I'm then going to select profit and loss. And I'm going to change the date range to be today's date only because I want to make it easy for us for this video. So we can see Bellevue Farmers Market, we've collected $1,000. Say for example, you hadn't wrote Bellevue Farmers Market. Say your income account was consulting or medical services. And on that deposit screen, let me go back and show you. On this deposit screen, you had typed in the name of your customer. I want you to see what happens if you try to look up that customer and see the history that pertains to that customer. On the left hand side, if you click on sales and then come down to customers, you can see Bellevue Farmers Market. Let's go ahead and click on that. There's no transaction history. Now that's kind of silly because you and I both know that we just entered it and we just saw it and we just verified it and it's there. 
All right, so let me talk to you about something different. Let me talk to you about sales receipts. So a sales receipt is when I'm logging the customer I've worked with and what I've sold them and I've collected payment at the time of services. So I'm going to make a sales receipt. I'm going to go up to the new in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to come down to customers and I'm going to say sales receipt. And then for this example, we're going to use cool cars. So cool cars, cool cars at intuit.com, very creative. Today's date, we're going to say deposit to checking. What did they give us? They gave us cash. There's no reference number. And then from this, we're going to say, what do we sell them? So what we're doing is we're making a history. We're going to say, okay, we sold something to cool cars on this day. This is how they paid us. And this is where we deposited the money. Down below is what we've sold to the, to the company cool cars. Um, let's say we sold them some design services. Apparently, we're going to sell one design at $75. I'm going to change this drop down in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to make it say save and close because I know I can't email out of the sample file. So now if I go sales and then customers, and I come down to cool cars. I can see my sales receipt is $75. So the advantage of doing a sales receipt is that if I ever wanted to know what I've sold cool cars, I have a list of things. I can take a look at it. I can see, oh, yep, that's what I sold them. That's what I charged them. Mm -hmm.